Explain something real quick. Normally we dress a little better than we do right now. This is um, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and what we've done at the county for the last couple of Wednesdays, we've had a dress down day. So everybody's been able to put five dollars into the pot that goes toward research and all of that. And we we wanted to be part of that as, as basically our employees have been doing it. I mean, how much how much has been raised so far for the about eighteen hundred about eighteen hundred dollars, and I think we're all going to put our five dollars in tonight yes. again also. So. Then we'll move on. I'd like to thank Cinnamon for having us here tonight. Um, it's a great time to come out. We do enjoy coming out. We're trying to have a little bit of a road show around the county so people can see what we do at the freeholder level. And I just, if uh, Mayor, if you'd like to say a few words or. Uh, yes, first I'd like to thank everybody for coming to the meeting, but I'd also like to uh, welcome and thank the, the Board of Freeholders for taking the time to bring this to Cinnamons. I've been on Township Committee for 12 years. I've had the pleasure of serving with Freeholder Donnelly, uh, both as a fellow committee member and as a, as a member of the Board of Freeholders. And I can tell you, we've got a great group here in, in Burlington County, whether it's leading the way with economic redevelopment, single stream recycling, and increasing public access to the to the county process. Uh, they're always out front in it, and they're always improving things and lowering our taxes, which is a, it's a beautiful thing. So thank you for choosing Cinnamon Vincent. It's been my pleasure to work with you. And on behalf of the Cinnamon Vincent Township Committee and Residents, thank you and welcome. Thank you, Mayor. We'll move on to our meeting minutes. I'm looking for a motion to approve the minutes of October 8th. And which would be a regular meeting and the conference meeting of October 8th, also. Mm -hmm. so, motion by Freeler Schwartz, second by Freeler Howard. Questions or additions? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Absolutely. Um, now we have a presentation from Atlantic City. All right. All right. Contribute five hours to the campaign and get off my time. Sure, we can. Hey, Charlie. There you go. Thank you. I'll just lose it. <laughs> You got the floor. Okay, I have time. So every year we partner with the fire marshal's office, actually in every county that we serve. And I know we're a little bit out of our service area right now, but we won't tell PSNJ. In fact, I, I grew up in Delran, right uh, down the road, and just found out that the solicitor we went to elementary school was uh, kind of freaky. There. <laughs> <laughs> there the rats, but. but anyway, we partner every year to give uh, smoke detectors away uh, to the fire marshal's office, and, and they use it in communities. Uh, that, that we serve. Um, it's an important thing that we do and we partner with our first responders because we need each other for the storms arise. And uh, we, we both share our core value and that's safety. So uh, 
Since 2000, we've given away over uh, 25,000 uh, smoke alarms. This year, we'll do um, 2,000 in uh, South Jersey, and 250 of those will be for Brown. We're happy to do it. Absolutely. We're gracious to thank you. Agenda items. This section of the agenda is just for agenda items. Toward the end of the meeting, we have comment on any other issues you might want to discuss. Um, Fran, agenda item or at the end? Anyone else on agenda items? Seeing none, we'll move on to resolutions. I'd like to make a motion to approve items G1 through G19 by unanimous consent. Motion by Gargano, second by Howard. Questions? Um, so, if it's okay, we're going to... Sounds good. I had, I had to direct my attention to where you were located this evening. <laughs> With your whole setup here. All right, so I have a couple of questions with regard to this evening's so. bill. Are you ready? Okay. On page seven, there is an entry for Apple computer, a 50-pack iTunes gift card for $500. What are those? I can find out Yeah. But it was a library purchase. Okay. Um, uh, and then the only other, uh, this is not even a question, I'm sorry that it's a point here. The only other item I have on that is on page 17, I just need to recuse myself from the Camden County College uh, entry. That's all I have on G1. On the first sheet on your expenditures, the last two items, if you could just give me a, a briefing on what those are about. One says conventions and conferences for $6,751. The other says NJAC, $9,609. Uh, this is for attendance at the NJAC convention. I'm sorry, it's for what? For the NJAC convention. Okay. The New Jersey Association of Alcohol. Do you have any people that represent you there? I believe there's 15. Okay. So both of those for the same conference? Yes. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Um, if I may move on to G2. Uh, I was just wondering for the, the sake of the public, if we can have uh, an explanation of G2. <coughs> Oh, there it is. Oh, perfect. <laughs> yeah, I just want to say that we were in the annual board uh, approved a, a $60 million capital program uh, which helps the county to maintain uh, its many, many miles of roads, bridges, and infrastructure. Uh, this is a completion of the financing instruments for that. First part was done um, in November of 2013, and we're, uh, we're rolling that over in terms of a bond anticipation note as well as completing the final $30 million report. Great. Thank you very much. On G3, if I may move on, uh, it looks like there were bids for this um, county landfill bio gas uh, power station typing modification. And the, uh, the company that's being awarded the bid, I just wanted to note that there were a couple of uh, missing uh, requirements there. I just want to make sure that those will all be fulfilled before this is actually awarded. They will be pre -building. Okay. That's all I have on that. Um, G14. With regard to this year in service of the grant, I am fully in favor of the service of the grant. I just, agreements. I just wanted to confirm uh, that this is not going to result in any sort of uh, job loss or uh, loss of services in, uh, uh, in the county or with regard to, uh, to these different entities. No job loss at all. And, and the thought process was is that as we share the services, especially for the maintenance and things like that, we're actually going to save each one of the um, areas money 
and just do a better job. That is all I have on uh, G1 for G19. Thank you. Anyone else? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have. Thank you, Director. This time I will be as consent of resolution <coughs> item number 20 through 24. Okay. Motion by Freeler Donnelly, second by Freeler Howard. Questions? So I do. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, for these kind of could be lumped together for G23 and G24. Um, if we could just have an explanation as to why we have this fourth and fifth amendment for these appraisal services. Some of those open ended contracts at the beginning of the year. Uh, when it, it awards these pools of qualified vendors, and then for particular individual projects, uh, contract amendments are necessary in order to award that work. Great. That's all I know. I just wondered if Ms. Mary got here. She, could you just brief everybody on 21? I know we got a briefing, but I think it's a nice project, and people can know about that in regards to the trees. I can do it. Yeah, I mean, New Jersey Term Flight Authority, as everyone knows, is completing on Friday a $2.5 billion expansion. As part of that expansion was a no net loss of trees for those roughly 50 miles that were going to be constructed at the Term Flight, and also, quite frankly, a great deal of farmland, both in Burlington and Mercer County, that was being lost due to the Term Flight expansion itself. So, the commissioners of the Turnpike Bike Authority set, set aside a certain amount of money to reforest and treat a great deal of Burlington County. A number of townships had to, were able to take part in this. Um, specifically, it was Mansfield was a big participant in this. It was most of the towns that were immediately adjacent to the Turnpike. We were tasked with the responsibility as county government of managing this project for the Turnpike Authority. They what was the number of trees that they were giving us out there? Um, all told, we probably um, planted over 12,000 trees. Right. And so we were tasked with the responsibility of developing the design, identifying the locations, um, and then managing the project, making sure the trees are properly watered and maintained for a certain period of time. And with that, we awarded the contract. And as it turns out, we have a decrease in the contract, which is a wonderful thing. Uh, $11,000 decrease change. Thank you. It's a great project, and I think you guys should know about it. Sometimes when we just vote on these things, people in the audience kind of don't know all the details, and that's a really special project that we do away from. And thank you very much. I, I'm going to um, go back to G23 and G24 with the Fourth and the Fifth Amendments. I, I really don't like the way that we're doing that. I mean, I, I think what it does is it, I mean, I, I think financially, it's the easiest way to do it, but I think that it looks like you're awarding one contract and, and giving five more contracts. Is there a way that we can do that without amending and just put them out individually at each time? We're going to look to do that next year. Yes. This was the procedure in place when I took over. Um, and we, I agree with you that for purposes of simplification, we would award the contracts. So the language for the specific project would make more sense, but I didn't want to change it. It's, been, uh, it's just cleaner. Yeah, I mean, we'll, this, we'll look at that for next year. Thank you for that. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Phil Rattle. Thank you, Director. At this time, I'd like to move to this consent uh, resolution. It's G25 through 28. Second. Motion by Freel or Howard. Second by Freel or Donnelly. Questions? <coughs> Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. That concludes our resolution section. We will move to questions from the press. Number is 9312 in the DDRGC fund. So those projects that are already underway, are they completing yet? Mr. Brickham? Yes. Those are programs that are standing programs that the county has participated with DDRGC for many years. And um, the, the nature of the program is, is we, you know, working together with DDRGC, we uh, contribute to them, and, and as I like to express it, we give them a dime and they give us a dollar back. Uh, and DDRPC also uh, puts a lot of uh, grant and money and attention to the county as our MBO. Okay. Uh, numbers 25 and 26. What are the new speed limits? Actually, what are the current ones and what are the new ones? New speed limits 25 and 26. 
uh, or your account or none of such a test field. I don't have any information, but I believe they were reductions. Right. And they're listed in the, the resolution body itself. Okay. And I have one more, number 15. Um, what are some costs extended? Number 15 for the child support enforcement program done by the sheriff's department under the 4D agreement. Um, they look at all of our costs um, for officers and cargo support staff and the formula basis based on how many um, arrests are made, how much money is brought in, and they pay us back on the reimbursement basis. Okay. Okay, thank you. Any removal of public comment? Good evening, Fred Owners. My name is Fran Eric. I'm on the National Staff Rep for the CWA Communication Workers of America. One of my assignments is to be the Chief Negotiator. I'm wondering if you could speak that way so everybody can also hear you as well as us. Is that? Um, yeah, I got my back to somebody one way or the other. But, yeah. Uh, well, anyway, I try to project my voice a little louder. I'm, I'm a national staff representative with the Communication Workers of America. One of my assignments is to be the chief negotiator on behalf of the workers. We represent the Burlington Occupational Training Center. That's the drivers, the mechanics, the equipment operators, and laborers who pick up and process the recyclables for the residents of Burlington County. Now, what brings me here tonight is and for those of you who don't know, the Burlington Occupational Training Center is a private nonprofit and a sheltered workshop. That means that 75% of the work must be done by workers who are classified with some form of disability, including the workers that we represent. There's also uh, folks there that are more severely disabled. They, they're called consumers. We don't represent the consumers, but our members do supervise some of those consumers. Our members are low-paid workers. They make between $10 and $15 an hour. No one can live on that in New Jersey. We're in negotiations fighting for an ethical wage for our workers. Right now, the workers themselves have, have a health care plan just for the workers that is paid for by OTC. Now, this health care plan does not have out of, any out-of-network coverage, so it's not a great plan. If you get cancer, if you get some kind of real illness, just being able to go in network is almost impossible. There's going to be a lot of costs involved. But they do get some coverage, and if their families want any health care at that $10 to $15 an hour, they have to pay for the entire cost of their family health care out of that money. So they're pretty broke after they're done doing that. Well, anyway, as part of our negotiations, as I said, we're trying to negotiate an ethical wage for these workers so that they can better support their families. Management is insistent that in order for the workers to get an increase, that they would have to give up their health care plan that they have and go to a high deductible plan with a $2,500 deductible and then pay 50% of all the costs above that $2,500. Nobody can afford that at $10 to $15 an hour. I don't think anybody in this room can afford to do that. So it's a very difficult situation that we're in, considering that these are workers who are primarily disabled. I want you to keep that in mind when we talk about taking their health care away. I mean, these are workers who actually really need their health care. They're already disabled to begin with, and there's a variety of different disabilities that uh, you know the workers have throughout the facility. Now, in spite of that fact that this is a nonprofit According to the most recent records available in 2012, that's the most re recent records available, the CEO, Joseph Bender, gave himself a $40,000 raise, making his annual salary $326,493. That's more than twice than the governor of New Jersey makes, and he said nobody should make more than him. Right? And I'll bet you Joe Bender was not asked to give up his health care to do it. Right? Now, not just Joe Bender, Jeffrey Haynes, who's the assistant director, he got a $14,245 raise. Karen Elliott, at this time, I don't know if she's still there, got a $10,900 raise. And Isaac Manning, the director of recycling, got over a $6,000 raise. Now, the reason I'm pointing this out is because there's a great inequity between what's being done to these workers and the people who are managing this nonprofit, and they're certainly not being treated fairly. I would go so far as to say that they're being exploited. In their last contract, before I got here, they got very little raises, 14 cents, 14 cent raises. 
So there's a little making up that needs to be done. So when you hear what we're trying to do for these workers, uh, in this economy, nobody can live on this money. We're talking about you know, residents who live in your county. We're talking about people that provide valuable service to the residents in your county. And, and what we're looking for is for some assistance from the freeholders since the Burlington OTC does contract with you, that, that you contract with them to reach out to Joe Bender and tell him to do the right thing and, and take this terrible health care proposal off the table. They don't need to do it. Uh, they're a $36 million or better operation, and they can afford to give these workers a fair raise. I brought a couple of workers here. Some of them I think got lost coming here, but they're on their way. And you know, these are these are all you know folks who really care about their jobs. They work hard every day. They come in. They, they have to stay late. They got to stay till the trash gets collected, right? And and some of the workers right now are on layoff because they're going to the single stream in the place being renovated. But we would really appreciate uh, some assistance from you regarding that. Um, I don't know if Kevin uh, didn't say anything. We didn't say anything. <coughs> No, if, if you'd like to say something, just need your name, um, address, and whatever you'd like to say. Uh, my name is um, Alexander Kettles. Um, I'm a worker at the OTC. Um, I, my address is uh, 705 Downey Court. I live in West Hampton. Um, I started working at the OTC uh, approximately like six years ago. I started out as a laborer on the back of the truck hanging and, uh, you know, scooping buckets and, you know, dumping them in the truck and stuff like that. Until I had, I, I got into an accident and the truck, uh, he ran me over and he crushed my leg. Now, after after he crushed my leg and ran me over, and that just, that just goes to show that it is a dangerous, you know, uh, job that we do. And and with that, um, I'm also part of the, the uh, bargaining committee uh, 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 to get us a fair contract. So. It's kind of like a smack in my face when, you know, I suffered. But when I went into work, I was 100% able. But now I have a, I, I am disabled now at, at a percentage, you know. And um, I sit across from, from people that say that they care and, and say that they, you know, they, they, they care about the workers. They want to make sure that everything is, is somewhat fair, what have you. And then you tell you tell you tell me a person that, that literally almost lost my life doing what I you know uh, picking up the recyclables, right? So after that, I was no longer able to hang on the back of the trucks and scoop the the, uh, the recyclable material and stuff like that. So I moved to the inside of the plant, which is now expanding. It's getting bigger, so it's going to be more work. Now as I moved in, um, I was able to um, get into a different position. And the position I'm in now, I operate, I operate the forklift, and I also work the bailers, and I load trucks. So, it it, it you know uh, uh, it did increase my my my, uh, my income a little bit, but I still remember the days of being out in the cold, in the snow, in the heat, and like like our friend had said to you guys, the routes got to get up. You know, because all you guys that live in Burlington County, you don't want your, your recyclers sitting out on the curb and stuff. And maybe some of you guys had to call for the mist truck. You know what I mean? So they come out and pick it up. But what I'm saying, what what, what I want to um to say to you guys is that um the 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 work the way the, for the work that we do and, and the pay that we get, uh, I just don't I, I don't think it's fair. You know, I mean, just with gas prices alone. You know, they go up, but our pay doesn't go up. You know, and 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 the pay that we're asking for, we're not asking to to break anybody's uh, bank bank account or anything like that. We're just asking to be fairly compensated for the stuff that we do on the, on the uh, uh, average level that everybody else that do the type of work that we do. We just want that. You know, we're not asking for uh, you know something outrageous where it's gonna send somebody to uh, to the courthouse. And um. That's, that's, you know, that's just I just want to point out what he's saying is, you know, we don't make prevailing wages, and if you look at the wages of other people who do comparable work to what we do, we are drastically underpaid from other companies, and we've got their contracts that we've taken for bargaining paper. I'd also like to provide you a little more information that we're going to be um, passing out around the county to residents. Um, it's a newsletter that's going to be going out this Saturday.
residents all over the county. And it's got um, some of the personal stories about the workers, but it's also got some of the details about the contract negotiations in there. Um, Thank you for coming in. Each of you. We, this board is used to having our collective bargaining units come into our meetings. This is a first for me. Yeah. An outside. We have nothing to do with the collective bargaining agreement between the between ODC and the CWA 1038. We are we're a contract work of those, much like we are when UPS makes a delivery to the county or New Penn Freight makes a delivery to the county. We don't negotiate their collective bargaining agreements. I would encourage you to work in good faith with the folks over at UTC. I think they have a board of trustees or a board of directors and soon that's with whom you're negotiating. We value our agreements with OTC specifically because of the fact that they're a show for and they do a lot of good work. On our behalf, if I try to do work on behalf of the military reservation, the joint place, that you work in consumables and consumer goods uh, throughout the state of New Jersey. So again, I want to thank you for being here. It's not our way. I'm so interested in what you're doing because we're in contract with the OTC. As we do so, with UPS. Yes, so I, but I am very much interested in what you have. I'm glad you're here because you're able to educate us and to what you're going to do. And I think that this is a contract where these are folks that are coming in contact with uh, our residents on a regular basis, part of our community. I think it's a little bit different than UPS. Um, no, I would say this, this is you know, picking up our recycle bowls, um, that, that we take great pride in here in the county, especially with this little stream and recycling program. And I think we need to make sure that we deliver the best service that we can to the, to the residents of Burlington County in that regard. And I think you know, there is a role for us to, to, play, to you know, at least reach out to OTC and, um, and, and you know, request that they are, that they are partnering in good faith and um, making sure that the people that are serving the, the residents of Burlington County are, uh, are, are getting a fair deal. Well, I think that's the role of the like to take care of them. Everybody's paying you to Anyone else? Yes, sir. Good evening, three holders. My name is Rich Dietrich. I live in 19 Emerson Drive, Center Mixon, New Jersey. And I'd like to make a couple of comments and ask you a question, uh, uh, three holder, uh, or can, if I can. First of all, I philosophically support the uh, idea that the lady and the gentleman were presenting with regard to the need, and I clearly understand that the county is not directly involved in that. I also wish to comment that if I heard it correctly, that this agency that's a nonprofit, it has a gross revenue of $36 million. If the executive director is making $340,000, I don't think that's excessive at all. I think it's obscene, okay? So that's my comment on that. I can't imagine how that, because I have a lot of lifetime experience dealing with nonprofit agencies. So that's my comment on that. The second thing is, if you may remember that I attended last Monday night uh, up, uh, your presentation on the uh, electric aggregation. I think I said it correctly. Yes, you did. All right. And I'd like to know if you could take a couple of minutes to explain to the assembled people here what that is all about. Yes, sir, I can do that. Okay. Um, what we're looking to do is, Brown County is looking to go into an energy aggregation program where we would be buying electricity in bulk. And so we would be able to buy our electricity for all of our communities in Burlington County. Um, what that would do is, if you, you've probably all gotten the phone calls of your third party provider is going to save you a lot of money in your electric bill and you're going to get a credit card or a gift certificate or something like that. What we've been dealing with is a lot of people seem to have had a lot of problem with that. They, they get an early rate, they save a lot of money, and then all of a sudden, <coughs> two months later, their, their bills are skyrocketing and they really don't have any options. What we're looking to do is go into a a group with the county, each town would have to vote on it, each municipal um, government, if they wanted to be involved and go out and buy and bulk for all of those communities. What that will do with us, we will have a contract with that provider that will lock that rate in. So there will be no fluctuating, it won't change, it will be a set rate for everybody. 
the estimate that we're getting from most of the places are you can save anywhere from 10 to 15 percent. There's some places that have changed, saved 20 percent on their electric bills. Our, our goal when doing that is just to make Bowen County more affordable, more cost, cost competitive, um, and it'll, it'll, act, it'll help our businesses, it'll help our residents. So we're in the process of going through the process there of, of setting that up and then we're going to reach out to our communities and have the opportunity to, to go even further and have them either vote on it or not vote on it, you know, whether they want to move forward. But what we're looking at is we think, from what we're seeing, it's, it should save a lot of money. And if we keep moving forward like we are, it's just a way to make us a better place to live. And if we can attract businesses and jobs back into the area by having a, an energy policy that makes more sense than a lot of the other counties are doing, it just is it's a way to win for Bronx County. <laughs> Anyone else? Seeing none, we'll move on to comments of freeholders. Senator Schwartz? Yes, I just want to remind everybody that Bruce and I will be out at the um, Burlington County Animal Shelter this Saturday. We will be judging a Halloween costume event. <laughs> so we encourage you all to um, come out. And I also want to give a um, recognition to the Burlington County, I want to get the initials mixed up. It's the Burlington County Friends of the Animal Shelter. They've been extremely helpful and wonderful to us to get our animals um, adopted as quickly as possible. And if anybody wants a special furry friend, please visit our shelter. Very good. And who's the Making Difficult choice. Well? Are you in costume? We thought about it. In that case, everybody's coming. I apologize for the holders. When you asked for any more public comments, I thought you were talking about the one specific. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I do have a new issue I've addressed, and I'd like to talk to some of the people. You know what? Why don't you do yours down, then we'll, we'll jump back to that. Are you sure? Yeah, yes, sir. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Dana Bowling. Uh, I'm here to address you tonight on behalf of the Burlington County College's former equestrian team. Um, is that right? Have I seen the Equestrian sure, uh, Club team unfortunately was dissolved this year after having four uh, very successful years over at college. The team was effectively dismantled in spring of 2014 and has not been permitted to exist during this current school year. Past, will be present, and future members of the club team are here tonight in support of our, our, uh, our request. For your assistance in bringing this team back to life. Um, I personally have lived and been horses here in Burlington County for most of my life. In addition, I've owned and operated a law firm here in the county for several years as well. And a significant portion of my law practice and a number of my clients um, are here tonight. It's devoted to what you can find law, things related to horses here in Burlington County. Um, a large number of my clients are involved in that industry. It's a pretty significant industry. Um, we'll talk about some of the statistics a little bit later. Um, in addition, I also serve as president of the Burlington County 4-H Horse Advisory Council. Um, this is the advisory board that handles all of the horse-related 4-H programming activities for you from grades 4 through freshman year in college here in the county. Uh, as a result of my position on this board, I've had the, the fortunate um, opportunity to become actively involved in a lot with a number of our teenagers and college-age uh, youth in the county. And many of those youth um, either attend or plan to attend BCC after they graduate from their respective high schools. And one of the major reasons they've made that choice is the opportunity to participate in BCC's IHSA Equestrian Club Team. IHSA stands for Intercollegiate Horseshoe Association. It's essentially the league. It's like the NCAA league for horseback riding in colleges. Um, that, that's kind of into that. Uh, BCC's team region consists of the University of Pennsylvania, Drexel University, Temple University, Villanova University, University of Delaware, Washington College, Salisbury University, and Valley Forge Military Academy, which I believe is a pretty impressive list of institutions. Uh, I'm proud to say that our BCC team members, a couple of them again are here tonight, have really held their own and performed very, very well. Um, it's been quite impressive. And tough competition to get the teams for these schools. In addition to providing a high caliber level of competition to drive our students to further their riding skills, competing as a zone and region uh, the BCC belongs to provides a unique opportunity for students wishing to pursue joint degree programs with some of those institutions, such as Drexel or Temple, to become involved in those schools' teams and compete right alongside those students. Um, unfortunately, Student Activities <coughs> Office at BCC has shut down the club team, despite a growing interest in the team from the student body. In only four years of existence, the club has steadily gained members every year. <coughs> so, excuse me. In fact, since the current school year began, approximately a dozen students have approached um, and showed an interest in joining the team that had to be turned away since the team no longer exists. As a result of student activities' decision uh, to no longer permit the team to exist, 
and younger of the teenagers in my 4 acres in our county are no longer pushing to attend PCC or losing enrollment due to this decision. Uh, many of them will be graduating from high school either this year or next year. Um, so the time is limited for them to make those decisions, particularly the teenagers who are graduating this year. Um, yet the explanation given by the Student Activities Office for dismantling the club is the faculty advisor did not attend each and every event related to the club the past year. The reason that the faculty advisor did not attend each and every event is because horse shows require travel. They're not always local. When we compete within the zone, sometimes they go away for the weekend. It's a pretty big time commitment for a faculty advisor to give them. Season consists of approximately 10 to 13 shows. And that number of shows depends on how high the students qualify to go. So there are 10 local shows, and then if they qualify to go higher, they can compete all the way up to the national level. Um, in addition, requiring faculty advisors to be present for each riding lesson, each horse related activity, every time one of the students goes out to the barn to groom a horse, would be pretty onerous. Um, that would be a ridiculous requirement. It's, it's multiple times per week that this poor faculty advisor would be expected to attend horse related events. Um, historically, the faculty advisor has attended only the one horse show that ECC hosts per year, which I think is reasonable. And the current faculty advisor is absolutely willing to consider doing that uh, in the future. Um, in addition, the coach attends each horse show with the student. This makes sense. Their coach is, is the person who trains them. She provides them guidance. She's familiar with horses. She runs the barn room. Uh, since this is a student from the club, the students were charged with choosing their own coach at the very inception of the club four years ago. They asked Morristown resident Bree Quinn, I'm going to ask her to raise her hand, uh, to be their coach. Um, she's only really done so over the past four years. She really enjoyed her role, and she's happy to continue to do this for the students. She opened her farm for them um, and has provided them with opportunities to ride and compete with any of them and not have been able to afford otherwise. Um, and again, she really is, is happy to continue serving that capacity for these kids. The student members of the club previously approached student activities uh, to seek assistance in initiating the process for Ms. Quinn to become a faculty member, whether an adjunct or part-time member teaching some course-related class um, at the college so that that way she could meet the requirements of being a faculty advisor. Um, that idea was quickly quashed by the college. Uh, it is commonplace for IHSA equestrian team coaches to be someone other than a current member. There's precedent for this. We've got Ms. Dawn Moreau, I'm going to raise her hand. Um, in the audience tonight, and she is the University of Pennsylvania's IH, IHSA coach um, for the equestrian team, despite the fact she's not a member of the faculty of that university. Most of the other equestrian teams in the league are staffed so similarly. We're seeking to have the club team reinstated and asking for your support with the influence that you have at the college to do that. We'd ask that the requirement of the faculty advisor being present at each and every event be relaxed due to unique circumstances of an equestrian team club. Alternatively, we seek to have a DCC permit for Quinn to go through the process of joining the faculty as an adjunct or part-time member so that she can teach a horse-related class through the college, um, whether it's continuing ed, public education, summer class, whatever, whatever they would like, um, so that she can fulfill that requirement. Um, again, at this point, the students have approached student activities um, on many occasions. They've had meetings, they've had meetings with a bunch of people at the college. Um, Unfortunately, they're not being advised that risk management has concerns about their team system. Not because any incidents have occurred. There have been no incidents in the history of this team. No one's been injured. Um, but it seems to be student activities' latest effort to, to block the team from being reinstated. Um, they've been told that risk management will now take months to resolve their concerns. This is unacceptable. The majority of IHSC shows are happening now. Every show that our students miss reduces the opportunity they're going to have. It's more likely that they're going to be able to go on to zones, to regionals, to states, to nationals. Um, they, they lose points at every show they miss. So we're asking for your support. Um, you're in a unique position to influence their actions for your village of our county. This is a highly valued team in our community. Rutgers University published a study on the economic impact of the equine industry in New Jersey in 2007. That study calculated that in Burlington County alone, there are over 850 horse-related business operations and over 12,000 acres of land that are used purely for horse-related purposes. Burlington County comes third only behind Hutterton and Monmouth County, so in terms of acres and other business operations in the industry. So clearly this is an industry that our citizens care about. Uh, the equine industry has been uh, determined by Rutgers to have had an annual economic impact in the state of New Jersey of over $1 million, a lot of money, and we're third in the state of New Jersey. So it's something that's really important to our citizens. Again, the loss of this team has a substantial effect on more than a few current BCC students and will negatively impact future enrollment. Soon to be graduating high school students will not have an opportunity to pursue their interests at the school they are considering for school. Um, again, we're going to lose quality students. Reinstating this team uh, and furthering their interests in riding um, is one of the priorities of those who live in our county. And because of that, we would ask for your support. 
Um, again, unfortunately, many of our current PCCT members have work obligations tonight, so they were unable to attend this meeting. Uh, but we do have several upcoming high school students and other community members here who would like to address some issues tonight. Uh, so I'll go ahead and stop talking. Thank you very much. I, I think what we can commit to is that I can, um, I, I, I would think three holders would agree, we will set up a meeting with the trustee tree board and the interim president of the college. Thank you. And we, and I mean, uh, we'll see if we can get something next week. Yeah, you know, and then we can sit everybody down and have a conversation. I mean, because I'm, I'm, you know, we uh, from here at the freeholder level, I think we we support it. I mean, we support 4-H. We did our fair yeah, rounds. We, we did, did the rings. Mm -hmm. We did. You know, and we are very appreciative. Yeah, I mean, and they're, they're the thing, and they're the things that you know. I mean, that's what Burlington County is all about. I mean, that's basically what, you know why that fairground was set up for those types of uses. So it's a matter of just sitting down and trying to work ourselves through the process. We'll have no. I don't think we have any issue with having that meeting. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Do you know why they're opposed to it? I do. The, the main concern uh, that they've expressed to our students is simply that the faculty advisor must be present at each and every club event. And with an equestrian team, it's not as simple as a baseball practice. Or Don't you have somebody who is willing to... I do. I have a coach right here. She served as coach for the past four years. And she's willing to be adjunct faculty for events. She would welcome the absolute. Can I just add something? Yep. Uh, just name your address. Hey, I'm Dawn Marone, and I'm a lifetime member of the uh, Burlington County population. I live in Southampton. I run the University of Pennsylvania at Equestrian. And I do need to say that risk management should not be a factor. We are insured through the IHSA. We are insured through every venue that we have a horse show at. And we as coaches are insured as well. That being said, no other school, no other school in our region or the region next door to us, which is Doylestown and West, have to have a member of their faculty be at a workshop. It's these are adults. That's can can just for that meeting, can we pull some of that data together? Absolutely. Just so you know, we can have a conversation. That makes Absolutely. Sense. Right. That'll work. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you. Anyone else? Yep. Yeah, we'll be we'll be in contact. Oh, we have your card, yes. so we'll reach out to you tomorrow. Perfect. Thank you so much. See no one else. I'll go back to public comment. All right, or the free order comment. Me? Free order. Okay, great. Well, I'll keep it short. Thank you to Cinnamon for hosting us this evening. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks to everybody who came out. It's great to see um, so many new faces in the audience uh, uh, tonight to be part of the process, kind of see how we function as a free world board and, and take part in the process. So I really appreciate everyone who came out and uh, those who spoke. Uh, forward to hopefully seeing you again at future meetings as well. Also to all of our uh, employees, I know it's not hard or not easy taking this uh, taking this show on the road, so thanks to everybody who has actually made it possible so that we could uh, we could come to St. Vincent this evening as well. That's all I have. Well done. Walk right here. It's great to be back in town again. Um, Makes me miss, for the, miss those days in this one building when you're five minutes away. Mm -hmm. uh, it's good to see so many friendly faces. I, mean, I don't see folks as often as I used to because we're all the way over in Mount Holly now. But I thank you all on behalf of all of us for coming out this evening and seeing how this functional team works together. Um, I, I want to do one other thing. I did it last year too when the fellow from Atlantic City Electric was in. They don't have to give us those smoke detectors. They do it. And the thing that struck me most about Venice Electric is we are a very small portion of their service jurisdiction. Probably of our affected residents, maybe about 10% are actually within Atlantic City Electric service area. During Hurricane Sandy, you remember this well, yep. during the emergency operations center, they were there. From the moment the first raindrop fell, until that we cleared that, so Ralph remembers that too, mm -hmm. until that storm cleared. Atlantic City Electric had personnel in our emergency operations. Ricky, will remember that too. From our emergency operations center, they were there the entire time. So, as an organization, I really commend them for this, the stewardship of the community, but more, more importantly, their, their overall involvement with the greater Burlington County and South Jersey community. That's all I have. Go around. Thank you. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming out. I'd just like to point out the very end. I have some scouts that are sitting there. Can you guys please stand up? Okay, so I think you guys are here to work on America, right? Yes. Citizenship in the community, probably? 
Yeah. Right? Right. Or no, communications. Oh, your communications? Okay. You have to come in. Well, why don't you tell the, the, everybody what you're here doing? Uh, we're here for communications merit badge. Uh, we have been here for citizenship in the community before. Uh, we were up at the courthouse. Um, we're here and one of the things you try to do is to get the meeting, get the minutes, and go yeah. back and report on what was Counts going on, right? For one of the things for the merit badge, you have to have to go to a meeting. For and what should you guys Okay. Right. Well, thank you guys for attending. Um, you guys can have a seat. But I want to point that out because I'm um, also on the Garden State Council on the executive, um, on the executive board there and do a lot of work in scouting and some legal scout. I've spent probably the last uh, 15, 20 years in scouting in this area. And um, it's always good to see our young men uh, come to meetings and learn bit more about what goes on in the community. So, gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, parents, and thank you, scout for get a chance. And director, that's all I have. He's got a couple of real quick things. Um, the Burling County Library System and the county office on the aging are teaming up and launch a new program that will provide library services to homebound residents who participate in the Meals and Wheels program. The Meals and Wheels program is a perfect conduit for the library service to get to our seniors. We do 148,000 meals. And with these people, what we're going to be able to do is as they get their meters, they're going to be able to get books from the library, DVDs, and any types of materials, and they'll be delivered to their homes. So as we have people going in there every day, they'll have the opportunity to basically use any of the library services. So we're real excited about that, and that should be starting up real soon. Uh, our second one is a, um, this is our workforce development initiative. This is one of the top priorities of trying to make our workforce designed for the future jobs that are going to be out there in the next few years because of how our economy has changed so much. It's been determined that the Workforce Development One Stop Hub will be located at the Burlington County College Mount Holly Complex, which is the bank right there on the corner that was just remodeled. We were just over there the other night. Beautiful place. It's going to be a great spot to draw people in. Second, we had our youth symposium and the creation of our youth drop-in centers throughout the county. I'm pleased to announce that we partnered with PSE&G to host an Employment Opportunity Expo that will provide job seekers with the opportunity to learn more about the employment and training opportunities available in the growing energy industry. We're going to have an economic advisory panel, which is people from the private sector who are going to basically help us try to pinpoint the direction and where we need our education and our services to go to get jobs with people in the future. And I'm going to be appointing that tonight. We're going to have Dan Caldwell of Stack Caldwell Engineers and Surveyors will be the chairman of it. <coughs> Rich Miller, who is the president and CEO of Virtua. Jeff Brown, who is the vice president of NFI. Sally Nadler, who is the regional public affairs manager for public service electric and gas. Frank Cordry, senior vice president of Fulton Bank. Sheila Harris Adams, director of business development at Parks and Life Inc. Michael Bray, CEO of Shelby Mechanical Inc. Wayne Hillman, President of Brown Volkswagen. Thomas Howe, President of Taylor Wiseman Taylor. Katie Gibbs, Engineers Labor and Employer Cooperative. And Michael Pearson, CEO of the Contemporary Staffing Solutions. So we're trying to put a, a, a blue ribbon group together that can really help us figure out and pinpoint where we need to be for the next 10, 15, 20 years. So we have people when they go to school and they're spending their money that they come out with careers that are very, very manageable and gives them a good future as they move forward. And that is all I got to say. So at this point, I'd be looking for a motion to adjourn. Motion by Freeler Howard. Second. Second by Freeler Schwartz. All in favor? Aye. Opposed?